So you want to become a project manager or you want to become a better project manager. It's generally the next step in a career path for most field personnel. Let's have a frank conversation so you understand exactly what you're getting into. Don't hang up that phone. We found what you're looking for. Welcome to the 5 Minutes with RCDD podcast. Well, seeing how we're pulling Category 6A, the most powerful twisted pair in the world. You gotta ask yourself this one question. Did I pull 295 or 300 feet? Well, do you feel lucky? Do you punk? In this podcast, you'll learn the differences between a 66 and 110 punch tool, the proper way to install a support cable, along with terminating and testing parameters. What exactly does RCDD stand for? Really can't do diddly? (laughs) Or just some guy that's just sitting around in a chair making podcasts so join us as we talk about the ever-changing world of telecommunications from isp to osp from copper to fiber design to installation now send the new guy to the truck for a bucket of dial tone and the cable stretchers while you listen to an informative program on telecommunications here's your host chuck bowser rcdd Welcome to the show where we tackle questions that are submitted by installers, project managers, estimators, IT personnel, customers, and on this show, we connect at the human level so we can connect the world. If you're watching this podcast on YouTube and you like the content, please hit the subscribe button and the bell button to be notified when new shows are published. If you're listening to this podcast on iTunes or Stitcher or one of the other platforms, would you consider leaving a rating, please? Both of these steps help us take on the algorithm so we can get this message out so more people can hear the message. And finally, have you entered the contest for the Bixie Field Pocket Guide giveaway? No? Why not? You better visit bit.ly forward slash CBRCDD contest for your chance to win. Better hurry, it ends December 20th, 2020. And finally, have you stopped by and checked out our webpage, 5minutercd.com? There you can access all of our information on our audio podcasts, all of our recorded episodes for After Hours Live sessions that are broadcasted on LinkedIn Live and YouTube. You can also send us a message or voicemail through that webpage. I could not wait to become a project manager. I thought those guys just sat in the office all day long and messed things up. Boy, was I wrong. And then I became a project manager. And while I loved the job, it was not what I imagined. Welcome to our project management series. This is a five consecutive episodes on project management. This is not intended to be a replacement for project manager class. Rather, provide you with some information to help you make an informed decision on whether or not to become a project manager or invest in project management training. This podcast will be broken into five episodes. Episode one, we will define what is a project, project management, and project manager. Episode 2, we will cover stakeholders and their roles within a project. What are the differences between internal and external stakeholders? Episode 3 and 4, we're going to cover the five phases of the project management life cycle. Those phases include initiation, planning, executing, monitoring and controlling, and closing, and specifically how they apply to the ICT industry. And then finally, on episode 5, We'll talk to a project manager certifications by covering Bixie's RTPM and PMI's PMP certifications. We're going to find out which one is better. To determine this, we're going to line up some guests who have achieved those certifications and talk out the process and how it impacted their career. I have a guest already lined up for the PMI's PMP certification. However, I don't have one for the RTPM yet. If you have a Bixi RTPM certification and you would like to be interviewed, please get in touch with me. Now let's set a foundation for this and the rest of the series by discussing some definitions. First, what is a project? The textbook definition of a project is a temporary endeavor that has specific and unique goals and usually a budget. 
The project is different from day-to-day -day operations in that there's distinct beginning and close. While operation has goals, i.e. make money, be safe, and grow the business, projects have hard goals. Typically for us, that will be to install, certify, and commission the cable plant and associated hardware that meets the customer's design. Don't let that word temporary fool you. Projects can be very small or they can be very large and take months or even years to complete. For us in the ICT, that usually means that we were awarded a job to install cable and potentially hubs, routers, access points, cameras, or some other type of electronics for the customer. An ICT project is a little different from a generic project in that part of the generic project process, they identify the need, create the budget, and secure the funding and approval. An ICT project, that need has already been determined, estimated, and handed to us by operations to make it work. Finally, let's examine that word budget. Most people, when they hear the word budget, they think of money. And yes, that is part of it. Some budgets in the ICT world that you're going to be dealing with include labor budgets, both in hours and overall cost, ODC budgets, other direct costs, to cover trucks, tools, rental equipment, and material budgets to purchase the cable, the racks, the patch panels, the jacks, and of course, the shipping and handling. As a project manager, you have to understand how any change to your project alters those budgets because one of the most critical metrics of the performance of a project manager is how they manage these budgets that we just discussed. Let us use an example of a labor budget. Let's say that you estimate and have 100 hours estimated to complete a project using higher paid technicians. The loaded cost is $45 an hour. That means your labor budget is $4,500. A loaded labor rate is how much the company pays for the technician, which includes their hourly rate, taxes, health and welfare, payroll taxes. It is not the sale of the technician. The sale rate is going to be different. But let's say when you actually went to do the project, the technicians were off on another job site and weren't available for this project. So all you had left to choose from were installers. Now the installer loaded rate is $30 an hour. Now because they're installers, they may not have the skills to complete the project in that 100 hours that the technicians had. Are you sunk? Maybe. Because their loaded rate is $30 an hour and as long as you stay below at 150 hours, your budget will still be met. That, in a nutshell, is project management. Now let's define what project management is. According to the Association for Project Management, project management is the application and process of methods, skills, knowledge, and experience to achieve specific project objectives according to the project acceptance criteria with agreed parameters. Project management has final deliverables that are constrained to a finite time scale and budget. Think of a project manager as a juggler who's juggling six chainsaws all at once. They are tracking the chainsaws with their eyes and using their eye-hand coordination to catch and throw and being ready to adjust if anything goes wrong. And just like juggling the chainsaws, if a project manager loses sight of any of their goals, financial margins, or other budgets, the end result will be almost as a catastrophe. And finally, what is a project manager? One of the biggest mistakes that I have seen by managers do in the ICT industry is to take a project foreman or a lead technician and promote them to be a project manager without any mentorship or training. A project foreman or lead technician's duties are to make sure that that ICT is installed and contracted as per contracted and keep the customer happy. Usually their focus is not on budgets or scheduling. We're also bad about giving a person the title of project manager Yet, they're not managing anything. They're just installing and certifying the project. If you have the title project manager and you don't know how many hours are in your project that you're running, or you're tracking the actual hours you're burning up to the estimated hours, or you're forecasting how many hours it will take to complete the project, or if you're not tracking the material or other ODC costs, you are not a project manager. A project manager's duties include those of a project foreman and lead technician. Plus, they have to make sure that the project is complete on time, under budget, and within the estimated margin. Usually, 
while managing several projects at once at different stages in the project life cycle. So what do employers want project managers to be able to do? A potential project manager may be asked to do a combination of any of these items depending on the company's size and complexity. These are some duties that were listed in some job descriptions from Indeed and Monster Job Search Engines. So a project manager is going to have to participate in project kickoff meetings to understand the project's scope of work and specific duties and responsibilities for all assigned projects. They may also be asked to conduct site walks for quality control, assurance against the scope of work. They also may be asked to participate in design build activities with engineering and CAD teams. They're also going to have financial accountability for all assigned projects. The project manager must fully be aware of the budgeted costs at the start of the project and monitor and control the actual costs throughout the life cycle of the project and be able to escalate any potential cost overrun scenarios immediately. They also have to be able to understand the project objective, the scope of work, and customer conditions for success. They may also have to adhere to a company's best practices, which will vary between companies. They have to be able to work with customers to create manageable schedules and milestones. They have to schedule and assign crews and deal with personnel issues. They have to order materials and manage the delivery logistics because you don't want the jacks showing up on the very first day of the project. They may also be responsible for ensuring training and quality control plans that were put in place by the company. A project manager may have to monitor project progress daily against the plan and adjust using best practice. They will also have to address scope creep, i.e. change order management, in a timely manner. Because if you have 150 hours to do the job and the customer adds work to the project, you now have your nodding schedule. They also have to be able to do that in a timely manner and identify and capture real and potential out-of-scope costs. The project manager is also going to have to communicate with and obtain daily updates from technicians and ensure that the timelines and the milestones are being met. They're going to have to closely monitor the deliverables and the management of those deliverables and the processes to ensure that the compliance with the customer's requirements have been met. They have to provide timely project communications and status updates not only for the customer, but maybe also with senior management. They're going to be responsible for reporting accurate revenue forecasting. They're going to be responsible to ensure that timely and accurate invoicing is submitted. doesn't do any good to do the work if you're not getting paid. They will also have to provide reports for their customers, including sales and or management teams, and develop and maintain communications in a cooperative and professional manner with all levels of staff, from the business partners to the customers to maybe even the technicians out in the field. I'm sure there'll be more requirements as they will be dictated by the company offering that position and the complexity of their work environment. You will need to be able to perform self-inventory of all those skills that we just discussed. Make sure that you're honest with your evaluation. You may also have to have, no, you will have to have superb listening and comprehension skills. You will need to be attending both internal and external meetings and need to recall information discussed at those meetings plus understand the impact to your project. You will need to be able to have great writing skills. You must be able to write clearly, concisely, and without bias. When you write your communications or reports to the customers and the management team, remember, their time is valuable. They want you to get to the point as quickly and offer solutions to any problems that you may identify. You also need to be fluent with computers, Programs like Microsoft Word, Excel, and project management software. Ironically, I've observed over the years that many people within this industry lack those necessary skills. You will need to be a problem solver, requiring you to analyze and respond quickly and efficiently while protecting your project. As a project manager, you also need to be good at conflict resolution, solving conflict with customers and maybe even management or maybe even the team members on your team. Now let's talk about money. How much can you expect to make being a project manager? Well, it depends. It depends on where you live because the cost of living. A project manager in Tampa, Florida will not make the same as a project manager in New York City. Another factor is the size of the company that's hiring the project manager. Larger companies tend to pay better than smaller companies 
and also have better benefits. Larger companies, though, may not be as agile to respond to the needs as, as, a, as fast as a smaller company. Another factor will be that if any certifications that you possess. A company will provide you better compensation if you have an RTPM or a PMP certification. They'll even be willing to pay you to get you those certifications. Other certificates that they put a high demand for is Bixi's Technician and Installer Certifications, certifications by manufacturers like Cisco and other electronics. And finally, the last factor is how much experience do you have as a project manager? Are you a seasoned, forged in the hot coals of project management? Well, you would be paid more. If you're still new and learning the ropes, you'll be paid less. I had to do research on salary ranges for project managers because it's been over a decade since I've held that position. I've seen salary ranges for project managers from 39000 to 160000 So while a project manager has to juggle many things at once and deal with a plethora of issues, that can and get paid well for it. It also can be a very rewarding and also can be a very major headache. So I hope you're able to glean some information from this episode. Make sure you tune in next week where we talk about stakeholders, internal and external, and what are their roles within the project. So until next time, be safe. That's it for this episode of today's podcast. We hope you were able to learn something. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on future content. Also, leave a rating so we can help even more people learn about telecommunications. Until next time, be safe.